So we said? Yeah. Action. Yeah. The first day of the big ball shoot, that's my girl, Malay. I think I was really preparing my whole life for a moment like this, to kind of writing, directing, and really kind of being the author of my narrative. The song is Lights Out, and it's, the song is kind of slow, melancholy. So yeah, pull this, pull this down, yeah. and then come in. I think if you start on speed, then come on speed. It's kind of like what happens is, is pretty much I go into the ring. The, the scene gets shot up in the course of the music video, but obviously we're filming it as one. Okay, I have this project, Big Boss. I'm proud of it, and I want to tell it in a meaningful way. We're about to uh, go on to RSI and shoot all of the bedroom stuff out. That's the for real, for real video, and a couple of continuation moments and some standalone scenes. I'm looking forward to it. Royal, how are you? Very royal. Very royal, Charles. Charles. Prince Charles. King Charles. I was having a good conversation with my manager, Big Billy, about it. It's so weird. I mean, with me, with music. Yeah, your mom told me a little. I know you don't want a label situation, and I totally understand that, but I've been working with Tricky. Stuart? Yeah, it's dope. Yeah. And I know you, and I know you hate that music industry bullshit, but if you ever need anything, you know I'm always here for you. And he was just like, you know, we gotta, we gotta figure out a way to tell this story, and we gotta figure out how to bring this new project to the world in a, in a unique way that's, you know, original to you. I mean, it just looks so fly and so looks cool great. and so vibe. Work it out. All the bluffing that you're doing at your mouth. Right now, hey, yeah. We could do it right now. Right now, right now, right now. And that really kind of just motivated me to sit down and take the time and I wrote in my notes, and then from my notes came me downloading Final Draft on my computer to just writing the script from the memory of script structure that I have from working in the industry for so many years, and so the story came about through some, you know, general traditional narrative forms, and then as time kind of developed, some in a more metaphorical sense. I have never filmed anything on this grade of scale. So most of the things I filmed would be well under $100,000. And this was over $300,000 um, of my own personal investment. I just want to be one of the guys. I wish the music industry was more like the acting world, honestly. I mean, the acting world can get fucking crazy too, like that Me Too shit, but it's like with the music, it seems even worse. They try to snatch your fucking soul out. I just want them to see it for me, like, I know what I can do. Tell me, or bring me into like one of the, one of your favorite experiences filming this project. I love working with Melise. Working on set with Melise uh, Riahi, who is the creative director as well as being the DP, was incredible. From the moment that I met her, the things that she added to the film, I think she took a lot of the emotions of what I was saying and added a metaphorical element that could line up really well to some of the more traditional narrative of the script. Hey, Mom. I wanted to kind of bring it more traditional to some of my more, you know, roots. Kind of putting it in a framework that felt familiar to me, but still adding those artistic elements that kind of make it edgy or take it out of the box. Sometimes being in the music industry and in the studio specifically can feel like you're surrounded by vultures. And just bringing those elements to life and seeing how they came across was really, really rewarding. Look, be in the vibe, but I don't want to have to be all this. So you just showcasing all those elements, very heavy masculine energy, like, haha, ha, maybe with the camera, like, whoa, you count your money, like, you know what I mean? I 
can exist in this industry and relate to people in this industry that just are the same as me. If I can exist in this industry and believe the things that I believe, then there are other people. Now laugh at each other, y'all talking to each other. That's my boy, that's my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now kind of give me something scary. You looking in the camera and it's like you want that person to be, yeah, yeah. You, give you know what I mean? It doesn't have to mean that just because I'm successful, I have to be around these people, I have to do these kinds of things, or this is the world I have to exist in. I can be successful and then still be the same person that wants to wear, you know, a beanie and some jeans. Can you read my mind? Debut. Have you ever acted before? Just a fool. Trick, trick. I got it. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm good. laughs> but yes. And I'm, yeah. Okay, so this is yeah. so he's kind of he's used to this, you know, Hollywood life. But we're yeah. gonna make sure we, we we roll out the red carpet for you. All right, I got it. Yeah. Action. I get to make the rules, that my job doesn't define me, my industry doesn't define me, I define me. And I get the right to be who I am. This is a great right. shot though. I know, it's so nice. I love it. Thank you so much. Welcome. But anybody that doesn't like that or has a problem with it, then screw them. But I bet you you're gonna know how to act the next time that you approach me. Coma, you in the coma. But I did. You know I'm the come up, you know. Waiting I love, right? Because I think so many of us uh, girls are now really, especially with TikTok and social media, we're definitely saying like, I'm waiting on love and I'm willing to do everything for love, but where you guys at? Y'all can tell me everything other than what love means to you. It was always about my inner fight with myself. It was always about my imposter syndrome, my feelings of no matter what I accomplish, I don't belong, or feeling like because I don't get along with other people that are like me, or because I don't feel comfortable in the celebrity world all the time, that somehow I'm not really great, or I'm not really talented, or you know, questioning myself instead of just accepting myself. Hey, you did a great job in there per usual. Thanks. Okay, so what is it, that guy? No, just stop, please. Okay. Look, I was just gonna say, you know, these Hollywood people are as weird as hell. Well, I'm Hollywood people too. That's what people see when they see me. Too real for the Hollywood people, too Hollywood for the real people. Okay, all right, so what? So what? Yeah, so what? So what? You're different, you don't fit in, but that's why you stand out, so I don't get it. So what? Being different is one thing. Feeling lonely, it's another. And you know, kind of the reality that I feel that I always say, you know, is that I've always been being prepared. And sometimes during that preparation, it seemed like I was losing hold of the wheel. And other times I was feeling like, okay, I have control of the wheel. And other times I feel like I don't have the wheel. I hope I can remember that shit. <laughs> it can be looking bad in front of Kiki. <laughs> My mom has so many lines, I feel so bad. No, so don't feel bad, this is her debut. It is, she's so good too. They've seen her do comedy. Uh -uh. She's great oh, at comedy. Good, yeah. uh -huh. Now you also show them that you could do drama, mom. Oh my goodness. From that to the gag, remember? You yeah. do your comedy stuff. That's now good. they're gonna be like, she's also Oscar nominated. That's exactly what it's about. Oh, Kai. I mean, everybody is not gonna like you. They're not gonna like you, but all you can do is focus on Kiki. Look, I know you grown. I know you grown. But honestly, this is why I kept you away from a lot of things. Because I didn't want you to feel like you're feeling right now. It's my career. It's my career. I can't escape this business or the fucking people in it. Yes, you, Kiki. I was there. You don't know what it's like trying to get these people to respect I do. I do understand. What are you talking about? I understand as an artist, and I understand as being your mother with you in this business. I was there. Do you think that, like, everybody respected your father and I? Because they didn't. They didn't respect us, but there was a lot of people who did. And that's who we focused on. You know, if anything I've learned is that you have got to focus on the love. And there, there's a lot of good people in this industry, and you know a lot of them. Okay, set. All right, can I play that? 
Y'all would be switched positions, yeah. so you would be the one in, on, in on there, and I was to come stand by you. Well, if you want him to be the protector, then he's on the outside. Okay, so symbolism sounds perfect. But I think I experienced a lot of situations at that time in my career where I trusted people that I maybe shouldn't have, or I thought people had my back, and then it was re you know revealed later on in a moment where they really didn't have the best interest for me, or. Oh my gosh, I look back at 28 and realize I was 21 and 22, and oh my gosh, that person was just taking advantage of me. Look at Kalia. Her shit ain't been the same since we stopped working. For real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, look, that be the problem with these little bitches, man. I swear, like, they always want some shit, but they don't want to give some shit. You feel me? Like, come on, man. I'm nice, but I ain't that nice. You know? And so the representation of that is just, again, you know, I was going through a time and a place where I really want to prove myself in music. And I really was exposing myself to a lot of dangerous situations. You ready? Yo, bitch, you ready or what? TJ, did you just call me a bitch? I just had to learn from that. And I feel so, I don't feel like a victim, um, no matter how dark some of those situations can get for me, because I had to learn. And sometimes, you know, there's a certain thing is necessary losses. And there are situations and things that you have to go through in life to let you know how to move the next time. And I think it's a really hard lesson for a lot of young women to learn. We immediately cut into the slow-mo of them. Then we jump to me and him. So everything else is just like you've already got it. Yeah, this yeah. is the end part of this, when you come in on us, that's also important. Yeah. And then the beginning half. And then the in-between, that doesn't exist because it's gonna be the slow mo mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how I see it. We want to know that we can trust people to do the right thing. You know, you want to be able to believe that, yeah, you know, this you know, this person's not going to do this or this isn't going to happen to me because they know better. But people don't know better. And I had to learn that I have to protect myself. You know, and sometimes that means leaving. Sometimes that means not going. Sometimes that means saying, hey, I'm not going to let you get away with this. Sometimes it means a lot of different things. But one thing that it definitely does mean is that once it happens, or once you experience this, all you can do is learn from it. I care, you know, I care very much so a montage of everybody in my life, um, which I think I have just amount of love stories that aren't romantic platonically as anything else. Um, and so I think that really, I love the way that we decided to showcase that because it's just about saying that you care. And I was, I feel that that's what I did do, is that I learned from, from, from all those situations and I wanted to show it in the storyline so other young girls and, and young men and people in the industry or people in careers that are trying to make a way for themselves know that they're not alone and that it is hard, but that you are going to overcome no matter how, how bad it gets. This goes for everyone. Work is important to you and that's fine. But you can be honest about the toll it's taking on you. I just don't want to let anybody down. Your main priority should be not to let yourself down. Today is really like the last day for the crew. So we have to do this first part, which is with my Saving Our Daughters girls that I've worked with for years. Oh. Being your very best friend and always having your back no matter what. Coming and speaking and hanging out. Many of them I've watched grow up. And um, so I'm filming that, then I have to take a break. I have to go do another job and then I'm coming back and we're doing the lab. So stay tuned. And action. Oh, no, no, no. I know you guys are not coming to me with that. I'll see you again next week, same time, OK? But you know what time it is. Let's give ourselves a big hug. Oh, that's so tight. <laughs> You're not squeezing tight enough. <laughs> We're so close.
close to finishing the end of day five. Kyle and Robert were amazing. This is their first day of shooting, and they were. Now, I'm about to shoot the last scene of the day, and I'm really ready to get to it. I'm tired. But, gotta get these shots, gotta make it look good. Yeah. Yeah, so when it comes to the whole, you know, the vignettes of the horror house kind of concept with the three guys in the window, it's very representative of my experience with, you know, Atlantic Records, you know, Island Records, and uh, Interscope Records, and how I felt just very constantly judged, prodded, um, you know, not really, just, it was a horrific situation for me, and so many people in my career, um, or music itself, was unfortunately dampened by that. Love Like This is a little bit more, you know, oldie style, 50s, 60s, you know, kind of throwback. Um, excited for the hair, excited for the makeup for that. He put it on me when I wake up in the AM. Got me in the kitchen, naked cooking grits and bacon. He be like an angel when it did not come and save me. Love what you do. Being rejected, anxiety, trauma. And it was the same thing with sometimes with music. When I re-entered the music space, every time I would be hit with those traumatic experiences of people telling me I wasn't good enough or being lied to or being tricked or being just constantly invalidated as a person or as a creative, as an artist, being shackled, being held back, being, you know, I went from one situation in the beginning with, with suits telling me who I needed to be as a black woman to going into the studio with black brothers telling me who I needed to be as a woman as well. You know, or if I don't sleep with them, then I ain't, then I really ain't gonna get, not, like, you know, it was just so, there's so many levels of different things that we are touching on in the film, from racial discrepancy, classes discrepancy, and, you know, sexism. Look, you just gotta just keep going, Kiki. It's like, never give up. Don't flood the market, that's all it is. You can't just, like, drop something and expect it to pop. You gotta just, like, keep hitting them hard. Okay, I'm taking notes. Any last thoughts, closing statements on this? Um, just that the process of making this film was incredible. And, you know, obviously I'm always gonna love to perform, but the greatest thing that I discovered was I have now a newer love, you know, in writing and producing and directing. And I'm just excited uh, for the reception of this story. And I just really hope that the messages come through because just like anybody's art, or at least you know the art that I want to make is, it's not just for me, it's for others. It's for others to take something from that hopefully they can use for their lives, or you know, you know whatever, or at least get inspired by. You know. Right. 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 You guys are that fabulous. No, Thanks, you, Daddy. No, you were that fabulous. Watching yeah. you with your emotions yeah. was kind of yeah. easy. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Great job. All Thanks right. a lot. Oh, do Larry take Larry to you dance? Oh, 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 oh. Nick it back, nick it back, nick it back. Hey. <laughs> That's what the spiritual aspect is of it all um, that I would hope for viewers to take away from it is that stay true to you. Even when you feel like you've fallen, even when you feel like ain't nothing gonna work out, know that at the end of the story, you're always going to win. Look up and then you're here. And I, I don't want you to wait like a good five beats. Okay. Is it okay if you cue her? When to put her head down. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're, we're trying to time it with the camera. You obviously can see from the back of your head. Yeah. So, right. so I'll just cue it. No worries. Perfect. Yeah. So as soon as Jonas is landing, you can, you'll cue her. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Okay. okay. All right.
I just love yous because it's about not getting some, about wanting someone, about someone not really seeing you in the way that you want to be seen. I want to be seen in the way that I know somebody really gets me. But it's hard for you to be seen in that way when you don't really get yourself. Change, stay true 